And we're so yeah, recording. This is the meeting of March 6th, 2024. The entire board is here. Catherine Hilton, Noreen Pease, whom I'm going to rename here, so she won't be called Noreen's iPad. And <laughs> um uh Garrett Simonson, Arlene Reed, Lim Levine. Noreen Pease. There we go. All right. So the first usual order of business. Are we happy with the minutes from last meeting? Yes. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Any any changes to recommend? None. Okay, let's just go. Yeah. Um update. We have now a date for the reinspection at 56 Wendell Road. It's March 26th at 2.30 in the afternoon. And that is what? That is a Tuesday. Yeah. And I can be there. If anybody else wants to participate, they are welcome. That's the one day of the week that I work. Oh. Huh. Um, I may be able to, Kat. Um, mm -hmm. I'll, I'll keep you posted. Okay. Yeah. yeah. Great. It's not essential. I can. I right. can presumably do it. We we need to have at least one, but it'd be good to have a backup. You know, you never, you never know what's going to come up. You said the twenty Tuesday, the twenty sixth, right? Right. Okay. So, yeah, I'm 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 going to put it on my calendar, and I very likely would be able to do that. Okay. Great. Oddly enough, I I I had to ask Claudia, you know, more than once, and she sent me. She said, "Do you want it on your letterhead or mine?" And I said, "Yours is fine," and because actually we don't have any letterhead. Um, and she um, then sent it to me and asked me to print it out and send two copies, one regular and one certified. And I was a little surprised that she didn't do that herself. Yeah, but. I did it anyway. It was no big deal. But I just did that today. So that should be enough time. Because it would be the the um the regular mail one was going to be delivered this afternoon, actually. The certified might be a little slower. So, so did, did she yeah. have to um ask the homeowner for a suitable date, or is that something where she can just say the date and they have to comply what how does how is that done Do she, she set the date and said if you can't make this date let me oh. know and we'll change it okay so it's it's comparatively tentative okay comparatively tentative right <laughs> <laughs> kind of tentative but you know it's it's intended to be to be not tentative so Arlene, what's the latest on the CDC guidelines? Did I hear that they got updated? Yes. So they are no longer um, instructing people to stay isolated for five days, but rather to stay home um, uh, until they, a person has been free of fever for at least 24 hours without the help of medications to reduce temperature mm -hmm. and that symptoms are improving. And those have been the criteria for exiting on day six in the past, but now they're saying whatever day you reach that point, you uh -huh. can exit. And I think this is based on the fact that data that's coming in from all over the world where practices are very different, um, th that uh, COVID is widespread enough that it doesn't see, it doesn't seem as though the five day thing seems to make a difference when they look at the data. Okay. Mm -hmm. I guess that's the best way to say it. Okay. And that people have become pretty blase um, in many cases about COVID, which is makes sense, you know, as we begin to incorporate it into a thing that's not going to go away, we're going to live with it like we do the flu virus. And um, that, um, this is one more way to just sort of incorporate it into our lives. They want to. They want to. They want to make the least impact 
on people's lives while still maintaining some degree of public health. Mm -hmm. And when you say the five days doesn't make a lot of difference, you mean for transmission? Right, right. The numbers of hospitalizations have not, it's it's not as though the hospitalization rate um, is different. For instance, California and Oregon scrapped the five-day thing a while ago. So they've got some data coming in from there. And they're, um, our, our, in Massachusetts, at least the rest of the country, the hospitalization rates are no worse than they are or no better, I should say, the other way around, no better than they are in California and Oregon. And mm -hmm. so uh, that five-day thing is not, not seeming to help the hospitalization rates at all. Sorry, I, I don't feel like I was very articulate about that, but I think you get the no, idea. No, that was perfectly right. clear. Yeah. yeah. Um, so uh, interestingly, I had a person email me um, with the fact that I, I knew she had been positive. She had been in touch with me a week or so, two weeks ago, and now she got in touch with me to say, to say that her husband is now positive. And so this change happened in the interim, and I went and did some looking, and it looks like mass DPH has not followed the CDC's lead yet, but if the past is any indication, they probably will in the next few days mm -hmm. or a week or so. Um, but still, Mass DPH's website is still instructing people to stay isolated for five days. So I just threw that out to her. You know, I said, here's what the CDC is saying, and here's what um, Mass DPH is saying, and <laughs> right. do what you want. <laughs> Right, do whatever seems best. Yeah. yeah. Right. And I'll I'll sell you nine hundred masks really cheap. Yeah. <laughs> right. Yeah, I threw some of those those um face shields in the trash um uh, the other day. And uh Marianne said she'll take some, but I'm I'm gonna save like one box for her. There's ninety six in a box. We don't mm -hmm. have six children in this town, as far as I know. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. So I'll save her a box or two, and the rest, the rest are going to go. Hey, that reminds me, we did a land office business in COVID tests yes yesterday at the polls. Mm -hmm. um, we are now down to the library has one box, and they took off the top tier. So I think there are three rows, three tiers. So they probably have about sixty tests mm -hmm. there. Okay. And there's part of a box um, down in the cellar of Town Hall, uh, less than that. And I was thinking I'm, I'd probably take that on um, on Saturday, do mm -hmm. the pancake okay. breakfast. Yeah. So, so we've managed to go through quite a lot. Good. And the fact that they expire later this month is, yeah, the, there's a, a time clock on that. So, right. Yeah. Right. Yeah. Yeah. We were making it clear to everybody at the polls yesterday that um, they were yeah. short term. And we said, you know, we have a lot. Take as many as you think you can use before the end of the month. Yeah. And the person who emailed me today said that they needed more and she was going to go see if the library had more. So it's good to hear that they do. I told her that if she was coming up empty or if she couldn't get out to let me know and I'd mm -hmm. help her out. So. Yeah, the library has plenty. Town Hall has has some. Okay. I'll see. I'll I'll check with Sarah and see if she how many she wants to keep at Town Hall and if I should okay. take them to, if I should take them or not because it seems like we're coming down so close to the wire we might as well just get them out. Mm -hmm. And and if anybody goes to the Town Hall for them and there aren't any they can always go across the street. Right. For as I long just as have to say well done, Cat. That was. Uh... That was a lot of tests. So yeah, it's pretty amazing. It's yeah. pretty amazing. Uh, people were just coming in and, and, and picking them up. And I was amazed. Every time I look around, there's another empty box. Wow. So, yeah, that was great. Um, um, so the other thing that I have, well, wait a second. Do we have more things to be updated on? From Noreen or Garrett? 
Um, we'll just say we're having a second meeting of the collaborative tomorrow morning to talk about, um, you know, e EDS planning and what makes sense for our six towns that are part of the collaborative. Uh -huh. And one of the things that is clear is that the collaborative members already have um, towns that they are working with uh, for emergency management services that are towns that reside outside of the collaborative. Like an example is uh, Montague who works with Gill, Irving and Wendell. Interesting. There's, there's all these little interlocking pieces and uh, overlaps yep. makes it makes it pretty complicated. It does. Okay, so so was has there been a meeting before this? Before after our last meeting, was there anything? Y yes. New to tell? Yeah. yeah, and what Garrett chime in too, because Garrett and I both went, but we're kind of making a list of the kinds of scenarios that might warrant um, setting up an EDS. You know, mm -hmm. the whole range of them, and uh, talking about. I think just in our group there are five EDSs so oh wow yeah yeah so and I think there's there. kind of universal agreement across the county that we need to um narrow down the number of EDSs we have and get more mm -hmm. more efficient and think you know just you know what really works and then the other you know sort of universal knowledge is that we may not use them the state just came in as we all know and took over our operations anyway so we're never sure when we might be called upon and when we won't do you mean like when we had the uh, the whole vaccination thing or are you talking about something else well i'm talking about covid we we didn't have a whole lot to do with covid we thought we were going to and then you know we didn't really know and we got some money you know how it yeah. went Okay, and so we, we I didn't really know you were talking about something new that I didn't no, know. No, no, we don't know. I mean, if we have a locally uh, based kind of scenario that maybe involves a food or an outbreak or something like that, you know, we can probably handle that ourselves. But mm -hmm. uh, yeah, I, th I think what we're what we're trying to convey in the conversations is that so much of the planning, you know, over the course of the past two decades was based on the strategic national stockpile <clears throat> and, the, and the idea that the federal government was going to deploy in medical countermeasures. And, you know, in my time doing this work, that's been extremely rare that mm -hmm. medical countermeasures like pills and vaccines have been deployed from the strategic national stockpile, more likely that it's been personal protective equipment or, um, uh, you know, other, other types of medical equipment. Mm -hmm. Um, and the more likely scenario is mm -hmm. that it's going to be vaccine manufacturers, uh, that are developing a vaccine based on an emerging inf infectious disease that are going to deploy it. And there's a lot less control over that at a state or local level especially mm -hmm. related to management of vaccine. And in, in the case of COVID where you had these ultra cold storage requirements that mm -hmm. no health department in Massachusetts, you know, may, maybe Boston mm -hmm. maybe uh, had capability to do ultra cold storage, mm -hmm. but past that, the, the likelihood that it was going to be even one of the larger health departments in the state that could manage the vaccine and then, put it into EDS operationally was unlikely. So um, so in our conversations, we're really trying to take it from the perspective of what are probable scenarios for a community like Leverett or Shrewsbury compared to Greenfield, you know, in terms of thinking about large events or, um, you know, places where there's food handling that, there might be a medical countermeasure that goes with that. <clears throat> I apologize. I got a. I have a bit of a head cold. Um, so we're tr we're trying to talk through more likely scenarios mm -hmm. where it would make sense for Shutesbury or Leverett to retain the option of uh, 
running an EDS, whether it's for, you know, a, a particular uh, defined event where there was a, an exposure or a particular population like the school population where there's a, an exposure or situations where maybe there's a priority vaccination population like older adults. Mm -hmm. And then we're working with the collaborative to deploy in vaccine and, and do a, mm -hmm. an older adult focused clinic at mm -hmm. the school. Um, so right. we're, we're, we're trying to, to talk through it more from a scenario base. That seems that seems wise, and it sounds like you're not any any decision that's made is not going to preclude our ability to stand up a small scale EDS that is particularly focused on Shootsbury or else maybe Shootsbury and Leverett, if if that's needed, if there's reason for that. I mean, we have we have the capability to do that without much much trouble. Something that was mentioned, um, I can't remember when, wasn't by somebody here, was about um, making sure that our our MOUs with our venue, our our um, our EDS site, are up to date. And of course, we've never had any kind of memorandum with the school, and I don't know if that's something that we need to have in the future. And most communities don't uh -huh. have mm -hmm. official signed MOUs. They just have sort of the friendly agreement handshake between uh -huh. the health department or board of health or even the town and the, and the superintendent. Okay. So mm -hmm. it's not a common. Okay. Well, we should think about that because we're going to be having, and we'll have a new superintendent at the end of the school year, I believe. Um, Jen is retiring, so we should maybe have a conversation at some mm. point when the new superintendent comes on board. Does it have to be with, is it, is the authority with the superintendent and not with the school principal? Well, that's a good question. I don't know. I would, I would think so. They seem to, uh, you would know more Arlene, but they seem to be in pretty close communication and, and work yeah. pretty closely together. Yeah, there's certainly that, but I don't know that it uh, extends to the, day-to-day -day use of the building for non-school events like that. Like did the, does the pancake breakfast have to, you know, does the fire department have to, mm -hmm. do they have to consult with Jan about that? I, I, I don't, I don't know. Worth finding out. Yeah. Um. Actually, the person we should ask is, shoot, I forgot her name, the principal. Um, yeah. <laughs> so, uh, you know, I'm Jackie, blanking right Jackie, now. But, Jackie Mendonca. Yes, it'll come to yeah. me in about two, 20 seconds. Okay. Oh, Jackie Mendonca. Right. Yeah. Okay. All right. Yeah, maybe I'll send her an email and just ask her about that. Mm -hmm. uh, I expect that she has the authority, but uh, we should we should check. And I'll just also feel her out about um, you know are using the school for that kind of purpose in future. I'm not sure we've had an EDS drill there since she's been principal. I don't think so. We might have had she might have been principal when we had the outdoor one cat, but they weren't really involved. Right. Maybe opening the building so we could get some equipment out. But... Right. I think that's the case. Okay. All that's right. It's not in the picture when we last did an actual mm -hmm. event indoors. Okay. I'll uh, I'll I'll discuss that with her. Mm -hmm. Okay. I just while we're on this topic, um, Garrett Garrett and I, as far as I know, haven't been called. Our emergency management team in town has not met since our new chief came on board mm. it's like he's had plenty of time to get oriented and you mean fire uh, chief yeah our fire Correct. chief i'm sorry yeah. mm -hmm. fire chief right and e &D. 
So yeah. I don't know what's happened to our emergency management team. Mm. I don't know. Maybe send a send an email to Lenny and ask him when the next team meeting is going to be. Could do. Of course, I won't be attending it for the next two months anyway. Probably. <laughs> Are those in person? No. They they used to be in person. Yeah. Mm -hmm. When's the last time you had one? Do you have any idea? Oh, Garrett, do you remember? It was pre-COVID. Wow. No kidding. No, no maybe, it, no, did, we probably met by Zoom during COVID. Do you remember, Garrett? It's been a while. Yeah, uh, it was before Walter retired. Yeah, but yeah. Walter didn't, well, when did Walter retire? It hasn't been that long, has it? It's been over a year, I think, that mm -hmm. we had a meeting, but um, did he retire over a year ago? Yes. I think so. Yeah. I think time flies because yeah because it would, would have been around uh town meeting that was mm -hmm. out course because they did a presentation for him right yeah right but he wasn't there because his leg was broken right right yeah so that was easily over a year ago yeah okay speaking of town meeting um You'll be glad to know that the Mosquito Control District finally got paid their $2,500. Oh, yeah. Okay, good. Yeah. Now, from now going forward, it should be smooth sailing. Mm -hmm. Knock on wood. Are there any other updates that anybody wants to make? Oh, I have one. Garrett had asked me for... Um, our records of ICS training. And I gave him for me, Arlene and Noreen. And of course he knows his own, so I didn't have to provide those. Wim, have you had any ICS training? No. Was that no? No. Okay. No. We have 80% of us, which I think is all is required. But um, I think, I mean, if you want to take it, I think it's available online. It is on what's what is it a state website um i don't know off the top of my head but if you're interested i could find a link and send it to you all right i'll scan it i um I and Noreen and Arlene have had ICS 700 and 100, and Garrett's had a bunch more than that. But I think that 700 and 100 are sort of the, 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 base, the base level. And they're both online. All right. <sighs> and I am continuing to plod my way through this train Massachusetts thing. <laughs> I am too. Are you? Yeah. But I'm not being very diligent about it, but um every day I do one and really it doesn't take yeah. an hour. Okay. I mean, come no. on. It doesn't take as long as they estimate it will. No. I mean, unless you get really into the weeds. But... Except there was one I was I that I thought was a cheat. Uh, instead of actually teaching you, do they send they tell you to go and watch some other thing that takes more than an hour? And yeah. I didn't do I did that one too. Yeah, I didn't I didn't go and watch the other thing. I just I just did what they had. Yeah. You know. Since our last meeting, I reset my password. So so I feel like I'm making progress. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> your whole thing. Wow. One thing at a time. <laughs> <laughs> well, Wim, I'll be the holdout with you. I haven't started and I don't think I'm gonna be starting <laughs> until this <laughs> me stuff is done. So the um on the on the individual courses, it says that they expire on June thirtieth, and I would assume that that means that they become unavailable as of June thirtieth. So that's just for your information. The originally discussed deadline of getting this done by I forget what we said April or April something first or think. something is not. We don't have to have it done by then. It's just that it's was moving from. Uh, its prior platform over to this, but I guess there was some overlap because I, it was moving to train mass, but it's already on train mass and that's where I got started. So anyway. Yeah, yeah the it, thing was, was, if you were on the other platform, you needed to finish it before. Right. They, yes, mm -hmm. thank you. 
that's well stated. All right. Yeah. So, yeah, I mean, we should, theoretically, we should all be doing this. Who is, well, so Noreen and Garrett, maybe you know this, this, presumably this is a kind of deliverable and we have to do this in order to keep our funding from the state. Yeah, I believe it is a deliverable. Okay, and and does every single member of the Board of Health have to do it, or is it like a supposedly? But, um, you know, um, I, I don't know what kind of you know trouble we'll be in if we don't fulfill it. Right. Garrett, do you remember? No, I ha I mean I I haven't seen them sort of say that it impacts funding levels. Right. I think it's I think it's more directly connected to the shared services funding. Uh, than other funding sources, but. And that would be the collaborative? Yeah. Mm. That's, that's that's kind of what I thought. Well, I urge everybody to do it. It's not that hard. And if you do like one a day, you can do it in less than half an hour. Especially if you don't really, really care very much. <laughs> <laughs> you know. The most challenging part is switching from the main home site to the player that plays the the course and then going back to the home site and it's anyway it's a little bit squirrely at times but I think oh, I, yeah. yeah maybe that's maybe just me yeah, I, I don't know i haven't had a problem with that um there have been one or two of these modules that have really annoyed me. Mm -hmm. And those are the ones that they don't ask you to review. So they right. think yes. they know, they know that it's a mess. Oh, well, there was one that did have a review and in it, I put, I think you need to go back and check because there were some cl clearly wrong. Right. Things. Yeah. I there was, there I did that one. Discrepancy recently. between what, the module taught you and what the correct answer in the the post as, course assessment was but anyway yeah. Left them right yeah that was the water quality one the ba bathing beaches one i think i think so yeah. yeah yeah they have some problems and some of those some of those questions are basically trick questions as i think yeah. you know if you're going to put tr trick questions in annoying it, why not just have fewer questions I that's mean, annoying you yeah. have to have i mean yeah. that's really tech. I agree. very <laughs> tech yeah but so i complain about that when i get a chance but mostly i'm not being very communicative about it me neither right? it's <laughs> it's not our problem right? right okay the only other thing that i have left on the um on the agenda is 421 west pelham is a sort of a, a imaginary number because it hasn't been built yet and Way back in 2022, we actually issued a permit. Yeah, we actually issued the permit for, um, you know, a new se septic system. And um, I think the well permit was in it. Since then, they've completely revised the plan. Um, and Claudia has reviewed it. And she's perfectly fine with it. And apparently, maybe Charlie got to see it before before he retired and anyway it seems it seems fine i have everything that i need to um to issue the permit except the updated plan because there, there has just been a problem in getting the the plan from them but um what i would hope that you would do is agree that i should issue that permit once i get all the pieces together and we should probably have a vote on that all right. Well, I move that once that as long as Claudia has uh, reviewed and approved this plan, then once the plan is in our hands, that we give Kat the okay to sign off on it. Do I hear a second? Second. second. Yeah. All in favor? Noreen? Yes. Garrett? Yes. Arlene? Yes. Wim? Yes. Kat? Yes. All right. Thank you. I will get that from him soon because you know we, we're getting to construction season now and people want to people want to get going i heard yesterday 
that the septic engineer um alan weiss yeah he's at a commission for a while so oh, yeah. oh no yeah i guess yeah i don't think it's serious he had some <laughs> elective surgery i think oh i see so he's uh he's probably housebound a little bit yeah that's interesting because um just a couple of days ago i sent him some information to do a title five inspection but you know his wife is in that business with him too so it may be that she can do some of the outdoor work yes say wim did you hear back from the, the driller I, I did i have an email that i just saw before we started at seven mm -hmm. and they sent an attachment with the water quality testing so right. i haven't i didn't open it but uh -huh. If you'll just forward that to the Board of Health email, then sure. we'll be, we'll be yeah. good. Yeah. Do you need a water quality certificate for that? Um, or, are you, you know, we don't always issue those. You know, we just say, fine, your well is good. No, I don't, I don't think I need it then. Yeah. yeah. Um, and Garrett, I also saw your email. I have already submitted my nomination papers, so I'm all set. Yay. Cool. Hey, you Arlene, it, are you are yours done? Is it 20 or 25 that you're required 20. to have? It's 20. 20. All right. I have 26 or 27, so I'm good. Okay. <laughs> I'll get it down to town hall. Um, I won't have a thing to do with the pancake breakfast. Oh, no, I can hand out COVID tests. You can eat pancakes. Pancakes, right, and lots of syrup. What? 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 <laughs> <laughs> I can't remember the last time I was at a drink pancake breakfast. Coffee. I wasn't getting the drink, signatures. Drink coffee, eat pancakes, and repeat. <laughs> <laughs> okay, I'll try it. I know it seems a little weird, but <laughs> I'll try. I'll try to do it, and I'll I'll bring the COVID test if Sarah. Well, I'm going to bring them anyway. I'll just tell Sarah I'm bringing them, and I'm. I also got a, about a million of those little cards that show the different sizes of ticks. Oh yeah. Oh yeah, that's good. Those are good. Those yeah, are good. Yeah. So I'll, good. So I'll yeah. bring them to the breakfast also and, and pass them out. Uh, I have a friend one of my friends already has a tick bite this year. So yeah. Well you yeah. you told us yourself that there is no off season right. for yep. ticks. And I did the tick borne disease module today. That was the one that I just finished. Oh very good. It's You're a little ahead of me. There's some Good gory pictures of ticks in there. So oh great. Um, I can't I can't <laughs> wait. <laughs> so I wanna know, yeah. I wanna and know also I bet it. if you brought all those damn face shields there, a lot of people would probably take some. They might be into <laughs> them for some reason or another. <laughs> you never know. <laughs> right. Maybe the guys in the kitchen would like to keep them from splattering. Halloween costumes or whatever. <laughs> right. Well, that's what Marianne said. She'll she'll use them for kid activities, you know, painting faces on them or something. Yeah. Seems a shame. I mean, you know, next you know, thing. I, you know what I think happened? There's a shortage of those things. Yeah. yeah. What I think happened is that Claudia... Uh, thought she was ordering face masks oh. and ordered face shields instead. Okay. I think she probably just... just I can find her. out from my friend who lives here in town and who's a an emergency room physician in Holyoke mm -hmm. whether or not the hospital could use them. Okay. Okay. I'll ask there's, still, there's still plenty more to go. I threw some away. But I couldn't even reach them all because they had to stack them against the wall for the right. for the bake sale yesterday. Okay. And besides, they take up so much room. I emptied two boxes, and the boxes are giant. They're like five feet long, and they've got ninety six of these things stacked in them. So you and they're in a bag inside. Two of these bags that were in two of these boxes took up a whole one of those those garbage cans with the you know the lid that opens that they have down in the boiler room mm -hmm. so i can only get rid of two at a time anyway i think mm -hmm. so yeah if you can find somebody who wants them um they can have them 
Well, I want to go back to the subject of elections, and I want to know how many combined years of experience we have on this board, because Arlene and Kat, I think you've been on the board since you were born. <laughs> I started when I was in second grade. Yeah. Yes. <laughs> and well, I know I've been on about 12 years, so um, there's there are a lot of years here. Yeah, that's an interesting thing. We, we should figure that out for next time. We should figure that out. Yeah, yeah. I mean, Arlene and I have surely both been on it for more than 30 years each. And you for longer than me. Just a year longer, I think. I think I'm at 31. Wow. Wow. That would make sense because I come up for a re-election next year, and that would it would be a you know divisible by three. So probably combined over eighty years of experience. I'm just guessing. Yeah, yeah, easily. Yeah. Yikes. Yeah, yikes. Right. <laughs> We're all old enough to retire as a single entity. <laughs> you think that would exempt the whole group from any coursework? You, you would might think so, <laughs> wouldn't you? You'd think. Right. Yeah. Okay. And you know what the other yeah. thing that really annoys me about that course is that you had you have to take the pre-assessment, which is basically the same as the final exam, right? Each module. But if you pass it, you don't you don't get to test out. You have to take the course anyway. Oh, are you kidding? Really? Wow. Yeah. Well, you can scroll through and just get to the last page without reading anything. Well, that's true. You do it that that's, way. That's true. I, yeah. I think the idea is they want to see what see if anybody learns anything. Yeah. You know, like if you fail the pre-assessment and then pass the course, which basically you have to one way or another, yeah. um, then they can Kat, say, oh, this really works. Kat, if you're going to send me the link for the ICS, could you include the link for that course as well? Yes. There's plenty of things here to fill your idle hours with. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Too bad we didn't all do these in the winter when it was crummy. Now we're covering spring. We'd rather be outside. All right. Do we have anything else? No, not I. Nobody else? Okay. Okay. Well, why don't we adjourn? Our next meeting will be on the 20th. And, uh, and good luck, Noreen. Thank you very much. I'll right. say a little bit of Dr. Yeah. Murphy for you. Okay. <laughs> Is, so did you say this Friday or next Friday? Next Friday, the 15th. Mm -hmm. Okay. Okay, well, good yeah. luck with that. Thank you very much. Okay. Feel better, Garrett? Yes. Yeah. Do. Okay, good let's night, everyone. Good night, everyone. Good night, all. Bye. Thank you. Bye.